Yes, God, thank you. I want to give my, my brand uh, I don't know why they give me this mic. <laughs> but when the Lord hits me, he yeah. hit me. Yes, yes. Well, I'm going to try to keep quiet. Yes. I'm going to try to be brief. Oh, Before I introduce my wife, Beverly, man, how many know that? A man that finds a wife hey. finds a good thing. Yeah. And y'all, that's my good thing right there. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't gonna give her up for nothing in this world. Yes, sir. Hey. Yes, sir. I'm gonna thank God for her. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because when I met this woman of God, I was out in the world selling drugs. Yeah. She got saved for me. Wow. And I used to watch, watch her every day. Praising the Lord. Get up early in the morning. Every day. Every morning early. Going to the bathroom, reading our Bible. Right? She used to tell me to come, come to church, come to church, come. I, I was, I'm in there cooking up door, cooking up door, cooking up door. She used to beg me to come to church. I couldn't stand to go to church. Then we got an old on me. But one day, my God. I keep on seeing her going to that bathroom early in the morning. I started to get jealous. I said, Lord, if you can, I promise you, if you can, give me the same glory, the same joy you give to that woman. I promise you, I'll walk away. And look at me now. Y'all just don't know the story. I got a long story. Y'all just don't know. I've been delivered. I've been saved. I've been washed with the blood of the Lamb. And I thank Jesus. I thank Jesus. I thank Jesus for my backbone. She kept me straight. She kept me straight. A lot of time I want to throw in the towel and say, you know what? Forget this. But she said, no, man, we can't do that. We come too far. You come too far. Yeah. You know what he used to do? And he got delivered. <laughs> yeah, she stay on me. But I love her for that. <laughs> I love her for that. A man, man, when you have a good wife, y'all yeah. don't, don't lose her. Right. But you know us, man. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> but anyway, Beverly Francis got two boys, Cameron and Jarvis. Her mother, I love her step too. <laughs> she keeps me straight. Shout out to me praying. Praying for me. You know what I'm saying? I love my brother in law, my sisters over there in Christ. I thank y'all for coming today. You know? I also wanted to thank Pastor for meeting her at the grocery store. Yeah. Because if we didn't meet her at the grocery store, we wouldn't be here today. Yeah. And I thank you, Pastor. Oh, and I gotta give you a hug. <laughs> <laughs> but my wife, yes, yes. when she says she's a go-getter, yes. she's a caring person. Yes, she she's a sharing person. She give her give her a laugh. She don't care. She say God will have his way. If she don't have money to pay her bills, she's still going to find some way to give somebody, to help somebody out there. Just call her. Will I cook some food, whatever it is? She feed you. She cook every Sunday. <laughs> but not today. <laughs> But you know, I just thank the Lord what what He's doing in our life right now, yes, and I'm right there to uplift her, not to not to bring her down. I love it because, like I said, I was tore from the floor up, and the Lord used her yes. to bring me in. Yes. You see what I'm saying? And that's why I said, a man that finds a wife yes. finds a good thing, and that's my good thing. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And I just thank God to hear today. I thank God for her. Amen. And some young men who are Beverly, as I pre present her today to y'all. Yes. 
Miss Beverly Francis. She's shown her gift in ministering to the people and whatever you ask her to do, she does that. Now, I want to let you know this very one thing, that this gift that God gave to that ministry needs not your acceptance. That's right. That's right. Say that, Pastor. I think I'm going to say it again. This gift that God has given to you like because the Bible says that the Holy Ghost gives the gifts to the church uh -huh. for the edification of the saints. So he's giving this gift to the church. Does not need your acceptance. Come on, come on, come on. Whether you accept her or reject her, we don't care. She's accepted of God. She has already been operating in her gift. We're just presenting the gift to you today. Ain't nobody talking to me. Yeah. Mother, she already been operating in the gift. We just presenting the gift to you all. Yeah. Who don't know her? Yeah. This gift today. Yeah. Amen. Right. Sister Beverly Francis. Come on, put your hands together. As she comes along. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
get down in your soul. It's better than any song they got in the R&B song that you can make love to. Because when I came to her, I was hurting. I had been hurting yes. for three years. Yes. People made me feel like I wasn't worthy on, to preach the gospel. Yeah. On, God kept telling me, I called you to preach the gospel. Yeah. I called you to go in the undesirable places yes. that people didn't want to go. Yes. The undesirable people that people, didn't, that people don't want to minister to. I called you to do that. Yes. Yes, God. So when I met her, that day at Brown's Kitchen, it was the divine reason for us meeting. And when I saw her, she could tell you, I told her, just after a couple of sentences, she asked me, you a preacher? Didn't I say, I said, you a preacher? And she said, how you know? I said, I can just tell. It's all over you. And when she told me that she cook every Sunday morning and feed the people in her neighborhood, I knew that's where I'm supposed to be because that's my, what my heart is to do. Mm -hmm. oh, then I want to give honor to my husband, mm -hmm. to my two sons, yes. to my granddaughters, mm -hmm. to my mm -hmm. friends that are here, mm -hmm. to anybody else that love me enough to get out their bed this morning just to come and support me. Amen. I honor you this morning. Amen. I thank you this morning. Mm -hmm. There is a word yes. that I have labored before the Lord. Mm -hmm that God has given me and I'm going to do my best to give you this word this morning because I've been to hell and back to bring you this word okay? the enemy got me down sick then I fell down my stairs and I laid there and I told Satan I said damn you say I said I don't care what you do I say whatever word God give me I'm going to preach the hell out of it and that so I'm going to do that. I got up off the stairs. Then this morning, I went to the job. Holy Spirit told me to get out of bed, and I went to the job about four something this morning. When I got there, they told me they, had been, they was going to get ready to call me because my cook called in this morning. They didn't get mad. Come on, man. So then I just said, okay, God. This ain't nothing that devil. Because you got to preach today, Miss Bell. That's right. It's okay. So then I. I love to be trying to almost get enough frustrated, but I, I said I'd come on. And then I got started feeling sick again. But like I said, there is a word from the Lord. Yes. And um, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians 7 and 14. Um, since it's you Sunday today, um, I want to talk to the parents first. And I want to speak to the children. Because we have some children in here that don't know that they were predestined to be here for such a time as this. I don't care if you was conceived at the Motel 8. I don't care if you was conceived in the backseat of a Pinto. I don't care if you was conceived in the chimney corner of your grandma's house. You're supposed to be here. So I want to minister, like I said, to the parents first, and then to the children. And again, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14. Please stand for the reading of the word. If you don't have a Bible, you can let the um, ushers know if you need one, they'll get you one. Or share with your neighbor. Yeah. If you got somebody to share with your neighbor. Okay. I'll wait till everybody can get the Bible. You need the Bible. I need one up here on the front seat. 
When you got it, say amen. Amen. All right. And it reads, For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean. But now, they are holy. Okay? Now I want you to turn back to Psalms 27, verses 3 and 5. Psalms 127, 127, Psalms 127, verses 3 through 5. When you guys say amen, and it reads, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb is a reward like arrows in the hand of a warrior so are the children of one's youth happy is the man who has his quiver full of them they shall not be ashamed but shall speak with their enemies in the gate okay? so it's a blessing children, parents if you have a lot of children it's a blessing even if you have children Amen. right I want you to bow your heads for a word of prayer Heavenly Father, Lord God, I come to you in your son, Jesus Almighty name, God. Yes, God. I come, Lord God, as the forgiveness of my sins, anything that I said, done, or thought that wasn't pleasing in your sight. God, I come, Lord God, today praying, Lord God, that I will decrease, Father God, as you increase mightily, Lord God. And Father God, that I will be the tool that you desire to use today to give your people yes. the word that you had, Lord God. And I will just be a messenger, Lord God. And God, I just thank you for your son, Jesus for fighting in our robbery to die for my sins, Lord God. Yes. And God, I thank you, Jesus. And I pray today, Lord God, that as your child, that I make you proud. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, um, if I was going to put a title, you can be seated, on this message. I changed it up. Morning, God gave to me another way. <laughs> um... I want you to, those of that, that have children, even if your children are not here, I want you to say to yourself, all for my child. Oh, say it like you mean it. Say, all, all for my child. For my child. By any means necessary. By any means necessary. We're going to say it again. All, all for my child. For for my child. child. By any means necessary. 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 All right? I looked up sanctification in the Bible dictionary, and it, this is the definition that it gave. And it said that sanctification is a state of proper functioning. To sanctify someone or something is to set that person or thing apart for the use it was intended for by its designer. All right. Okay. And all of us, like I said, no matter how we got here, because we know that it was only God's plan and God's reason and God's timing that we are here because yeah, he's the one who designed us. Right. So if we got a if you got a problem with your kids like Pastor was saying this morning, you need to check yourself. Yeah. Because I'm quite sure God then designed them to be disrespectful to you. Right. God then designed them to cut us you out. That's yeah. right. God then designed them to do the, a whole lot of things that they doing. <laughs> so you might want to check with yourself. That's right. Okay. okay. It's imperative that we as parents that our children know how valuable they are to the kingdom of God. Children are a blessing from the Father. They are the most valuable fruit of the kingdom. Because they are sensitive and palatable, open to the gospel. They are fresh and energetic with years of service to offer to the kingdom. If I can stop right there for a minute, I want to talk to the Eve's in the house. Oh, right. The Eve. Because, you know, they blame Eve for everything that happened in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? Uh -huh. They blame Eve. 
It said if Eve hadn't ate of the fruit and Eve hadn't did what God told Adam not to do, things wouldn't happen like they did. But I'm here to tell you today it doesn't matter who did what. Because God told us and tells us, he let us know that even he told Abraham, be fruitful and multiply. To fill the land. And the only way he was going to do that was Eve, you're going to bear children. Right. And you know that, that old fly fox, the devil? The way you want is women, we can give that devil a black eye. Right. Every time we have a baby. Every time. If we raise that child and love the Lord, to fill the Lord, and yes. to keep That's God's right. commandments. That's right. That's right. Every time that we bear a child, right. you can hear me now. Right. Every time that we bear a child, and we raise that child, to love the Lord, to fear the Lord, and to keep the Lord's commandments, we give the enemy a black eye. That's why Satan don't want us raising our children right. Because he wants to keep that curse that we're under. He wants us to stay under that curse. But I'm here today to tell you as parents, it can stop today. It can stop. Shirts on which. When my mama had me, got pregnant when she was 16 years old. Uh huh. And she was 17 when she had me. Right. My mama told me she didn't even know where I was gonna come from. Right. Okay. Mm. She didn't know where I was gonna come from. So therefore, when she told me she didn't know where I was gonna come from, they let me know she didn't really know what she was gonna do with me when I gave him. Right. Everything else was wrong. I said, but you gotta think about it like this. She told us what we needed for that time. For that time. Because if she had told us, you know, you can't stay behind. You do this, you probably would end up in prison. Right. So she said, don't you treat them a bit better than they treat you. So we weren't, we didn't worry about what she should have been saying. We don't worry about what she said. Because that helped us got through where we were. Yeah. So that's what I'm telling you today. As children, stop dwelling on what mama daddy did do. And thank God, even if you got to thank God because it got you him. Yes, yes, yes. Thank God that they got you him. Amen. You know, it says in the Bible days, one of the characteristics that distinguished the Jews from the other people is the value that they placed the children. We now live in a world that has people working 24 hours a day yeah. to distort the minds of our children. Come on now, you come on. 24 hours a day to distort the minds of our children. People got jobs, get paid to mess up our kids' minds. You better say amen because I'm going to step you all the time. But we got people working 24 hours a day to mess up our children's minds. Now, if the enemy going to put that much money and time to destroy our children. On, children, now I'm talking to you. Uh-huh. Y'all got to realize y'all must be detrimental to the kingdom of Christ. Yeah, my God. Y'all must be detrimental to the kingdom of Christ. Yeah, otherwise, why would he employ people to destroy y'all and mess y'all up? Yeah, BET, yeah. MTV, Come on, man. all of them, they spent 24 hours a day sit down in little boardrooms thinking ways to destroy our kids' minds and mess them up. And y'all don't think y'all work. Lord have mercy. You know, the Bible clearly states that while we are in this world, uh-huh. I, 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 let, me, let me start right here. Uh-huh. I want, by show of hands, children, how many of you know the difference between right and wrong? Okay, how old you are? Raise your hand. How many of you all know the difference between right and wrong? Okay, so you held accountable for your own actions. Because you know the difference between right and wrong. You can't blame mama and daddy no more. Can't blame mama and daddy no more. Well, it was my mama's fault they ain't turned out no good. No, it's your fault. It's your fault if you didn't turn out good. You can't blame that on mama no more. <laughs> the Bible clearly states that while we're in this world, we are not of this world. Therefore, we as people of God cannot raise our children based on the world's belief system. Right. The world belief system contradicts everything that God has to say about a matter. The world says, if it feels good, 
Just do it. That's what the world says. It feels good because I like kids. I don't want them to taste good. I don't want them to feel good. That's what the world is doing to our children. That's right. Our job as a parent is to give our children a biblical worldview and not let the world push their view on them. Right. Right. We can't be Christian parents and raising our kids with the worldview. That's right. I'd be damned, yes, I said it. I'd be damned if I'm gonna let somebody else tell me how to raise my child. It ain't safe. Don't tell me that I shouldn't break my teeth. Don't tell me that I shouldn't put my hands on my kids. Don't tell me that I shouldn't chastise my kids. And they're gonna tell me I need to be talking to a therapist because I got some anger issues. Yeah. I got some anger issues. When I get up and go to work in the morning, and I leave that joker home in the bed, when I go pay my money for a bed that he sleep in, I ain't sleeping in, I got some anger issues. When I work hard to feed him, and it ain't going to rise or they ain't going to talk back to me, I got some anger issues. Yeah. I probably need to be laying on somebody's couch. Yeah. Yeah. I was raised old school. Okay. Yes. Well, old school taught me children should hate hate children. Uh-huh. Children should stay in a child's place. Yeah. Now, I, I, I'm, like I said, I'm old school. That you know, I know y'all new school parents may not believe that. And y'all let y'all kids get all in y'all conversations. Uh-huh. And, and a lot of y'all got y'all kids and they y'all friends. Uh-huh. Ain't my child friend. Okay. Right. Now when we start doing friend stuff, like they share some of the bills. Right. And they share some of the gross calls. Okay. And they just then we friends then. Yeah. But as long as I take care of them, right. I'm their mom. Right. I don't need no more friends. Okay. <laughs> I hope I'm helping somebody today. Yeah. Yeah. I hope, I hope I'm hitting somebody today. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, say, this is all for my child. <laughs> By any means necessary. As I was studying, Deuteronomy said that the Canaanites and the Ammonites were most known for shoving their children into a furnace to sacrifice their children to a guy called Molek. You may say that's horrible. You may say, how could how could they have a child and, 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 and heat up a furnace and push their children in there and close the door and watch their children burn? We do it every day. Come on. All right. All right. All right. Come on. We, we do it. We do it. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a nice, clean preacher. I'm just telling you the way God tells me. We do it every day. You know, I, I realize that we are people that, you know, we, we like to keep it nice. And, you know, even if it's, you're doing nasty, you want to keep it nice and sweet. Nice, man. Okay? Nice, nice, nice master. Thank you. <laughs> so we look at them and say, oh, I can never do that little junior. I can never do that little Mary. Oh, no. But you're doing it every day. Yeah, every day. You do it every day. Yeah, you want to know how? Come on, come on. Come on. When you take little Mary. Five or six years old, and you dress her like she's 16 years old. Come on, come on. And you got grown men looking at her. Come on, man. And let me tell you, it's a new thing now. Because as I was studying, I was going through Facebook. And on Facebook page, I was being nosy. I was on Facebook. And parents, mothers, has got children. Got pictures of their stuff. Half naked on Facebook. Yeah. But they got little children out there. You put your child in some mess that you involved in, and God will bless you with that child. Oh, yeah. How could you do that? Right, 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 right. Look at your neighbor and say, You're burning your child, you're burning your child. Burning your child. You, you, you're pushing him in the furnace. Okay? Then, you got these little boys crying him. Can I say home? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Them in the body. 
Help us, God. Help us, God. Help us, God. That's why we tend to have a generation of women who want a career more than they want children and a generation of men who want to get old pregnant but don't want to stick around to raise their children. Yeah, they want to give them, but they don't want to raise them. No, I don't want to raise them. That's right. So, Lord Jesus. Help us, God. Lord help Jesus. Us God. Help us, help us. Hey, help us, God. Help us, God. Hey. In Proverbs 22 and 6, you don't have to turn that, but uh -huh. it says, train up a child train them up. in the way that they should go. Uh -huh. And when they go grow old, they won't depart. Uh -huh. And I'm here to tell you, I'm a living witness. I am a living witness. <laughs> Me too. I have a 28-year-old son. Do he always do what's right? No. But guess what? He's 28 years old. And I start training him. When I was 19 years old, my mama can tell you. If I made a promise to God that God, if you help me raise this boy, because he lost his dad at one years old. But I said, God, if you help me raise this boy the way I should, if you tell me when he wanted to go out with his friends and you say no, I say no. Yes, sir. I don't care if people don't understand. Yes. If you say he gotta be in when the street light come yes. on, he gotta be in when the street light come on. Yes, if you say fuck it till he's 17, I break that behind you with 17 yeah, years old. Yeah. Oh, that's what God yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And guess what? He yeah, made he made straight. Yeah, he made straight. Yeah, but it always comes back. Yeah, yeah. You better hear me. You better hear me. He made straight. But it always comes back. Yes, guess what? Don't worry about him. Me either. Don't worry about him. Because mm -hmm. I say, you know what, boy, God, your daddy. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. You want me to marry somebody get married yes, me when I was 19 and I gave him to God? Uh -huh. Worry about you. What? But he can't call me and tell me not to worry about him. Jesus. Because you God's child. Yes, sir. That's who he is. And God can see what you're yes, doing God. and I don't even know. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. So I'm telling you, Woo. you don't get nothing else today. Yes, sir. Get this. Uh -huh. Train a child the way they should go. That's right. And I promise your mama. I promise you, Dad, you won't be sorry. Yes. I don't care what the world says. I don't care if everybody in the neighborhood go against you and they tell your children you a mean mama. You will never have your mama don't need to live in the town no fun. I don't care. 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 Guess what? You have less trip to the jail house. Yes, sir. Yeah, less trip to the hospital. Yes. Might have to somebody today. Yes. Yeah. You know, and a lot of us as parents. The reason that we can't train our children to raise our children the way we should, because we still got a childish mind. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We got a childish can't mind. Can't say amen, say y'all. Yeah. <laughs> in 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, it says, When I was a child, I spoke as a child, understood as a child, uh -huh. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So, guess what? Tell yourself, it's time for me to act like I'm grown. Uh -oh. It's time for me to act like I'm grown. Yeah. You want to say you're grown because you pay the bills? Uh, you want to say you're grown because, you know, you maybe was born? Let me tell you, 1965. <laughs> that don't make you grown. That don't make you grown. And you want your child to respect you? How you going to ask your child not to do something when you're doing the same? That's uh -huh. right. You can't tell little girls don't wear their short dresses that when they been over there behind the show, but yours is just as short as this. That's right. Do it. You can't tell little girls to put on shirts, clothes up, and don't show the cleavage. That's right. When you got all yours exposed. That's right. That's right. And it's another one I saw on Facebook. Woman took a picture of a man of himself in a bronze bathroom, saying, I'm, "I'm looking for me a, a good man with your problem. You looking for a good man. Mm -hmm. You gonna get just what you're looking for. Yeah, that's right. Lord have mercy, y'all. Help us, God. Help us, God. We, we, we gotta stop. We gotta stop. We're in this world, but we not what? Uh -huh. We not of this world. To get your neighbor say, by any means necessary. By any means necessary. And tell your kids, if you got kids, say, I did it all for love. I did, I did it all for love. love. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> mothers need to act like mothers. Yeah. 
and fathers need to act like fathers. Yeah. Oh, Lord Jesus. Jesus says in, in Mark 9 and 42, this is serious about this thing when you kids. He says, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him if a millstone was hung around his neck and he was thrown into the ocean. God is serious about what we doing to our children. Yeah, speak right. Right. Amen. I, I, if I can share something with you real quick. I was reading the story of Samuel. Samuel's mother was, was named Hannah. And Hannah couldn't have kids. And Elkanah was married to her in Peniel. Uh-huh. And Hannah prayed and prayed and prayed, and the reason she couldn't have kids because her womb was, was, was barren. Yeah. She was dead. God had dead. Mm-hmm. But she prayed and asked God for a male child. Yes, sir. She said, God, if you give me this male child, I promise you that when he becomes the age to be weaned, I'll give him back to you. Mm-hmm. And I won't let her raise up his head. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And guess what? She kept her promise to God. Mm-hmm. So the pastor said this morning, some of the promises that we kept, we got an answer to God for them. Yeah, that's right. Right. But anyway, she kept the promise that she made to the Lord. And when Samuel became the age to be weaned, she gave him to Eli. That's Eli was the priest. Eli. But Eli had two bad boys. Bad boys. That he was raised. Right. He was a priest. Mm-hmm. It's a church. They say preachers got the worst children. That's what they say. Eli had two bad boys. Bad boys. You can tell they were bad because their name was bad. It was Hoff, and Fins. That's right. <laughs> bad boys. Bad boys. <laughs> but anyway, God knew the plan that he had for Samuel's life. Yes. So God, Samuel took, God, Eli took Samuel. And he was raising Samuel. Like I said, it was Hoff, and Fins was, was there. And it was disgrace in the temple of God. Yes, sir. He was doing what? It was doing the awful God things like mm-hmm. the people was bringing the meat and the meat was supposed to be dipped down in this boiling hot water on a hook. Mm-hmm. And whatever came off of the hook was supposed to be for God and whatever was left on that was for them. But they got the joke because they were bad. It was bad. <laughs> they got to the point they weren't even dipping the, 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 the meat down in the, in the hot water no more. It was just eating the raw meat. At the temple doing sleeping with the women at the temple yes, doing this disgracing yes, God's name. God. His daddy didn't say nothing. Didn't say nothing. So God got mad and said, Oh, so you gonna honor so I'm gonna tell you this now, you better listen. Listen. When God give you these kids and tell you to train them mm-hmm. and you don't train them, mm-hmm. and then at all time I ain't gonna spank them because I love them. I got mad with Eli. He said, you going to honor your sons? Mm. Or do you honor me? Mm. See, that's what you're doing when you, when you don't train them and when you don't reprimand them. And this is what I don't get. How can you whoop a child and you cry too? I ain't never did that one. I ain't, I ain't did that one. I, yeah, you better tell me. I ain't never. I may have gave out bread. And when that joke came back, I'd be like, you want some more? Okay. <laughs> but I ain't never cry. <laughs> ain't never cry. But anyway, God sent somebody to talk to Eli to tell him what he was doing. So then Eli goes to his kids, his sons, and tell him, you know, y'all disgrace in the name of God. And if y'all disgrace a man, then God will take care of you for disgracing that, that man, for sinning against that man, but y'all sinning against God. And in your leisure, when you get a chance, please read it. Because some of y'all, I'm sorry, I got to say it. God got to say it. When God take these disobedient children, and he take them away from you, I know it's going to hurt. But if God, God said a disobedient child will live out their days. And guess what? When I read that in, in Samuel about half nine minutes, God said, nevertheless, did they heed the voice of their father? Because God decided to kill them. God didn't want them to listen to their dad. Because God said, I want them jokers dead. Right. My God. So, because guess what? Samuel was more important to God than them two disobedient jokers that was disgracing the temple of God. Yeah. So God told Eli, I'm going to kill him. And the reason you're going to know I kill him, because I'm going to kill him on the same day. And guess what? I ain't gonna never let an old man 
be in your house. You will never have an old man in your house at all. That's what he said. Guess what? When they got killed, on the day they got killed, just like God said, both of them died. And when Eli got word, Eli knew that wasn't nobody but God. He fell dead. He sure did. And guess what? Phineas had a wife that was pregnant. And she went in early premature labor. Okay? I'm reading it. I'm like, God, I thought you said you weren't going to let an old man be in there. Guess what? It wasn't the third one over. Okay? The little baby died. But before the baby died, she, she, she named the baby Ichabod. Yeah. Mm. Meaning God's glory has left us. She knew that was God. Right, right. So that's what I'm telling you. God ain't pleased. And I'm just thought right there with training them. That's right. You got to do what the word of God says by these children. Because guess what? You are aborting what God has put inside of them. By what you not doing. My God. And you don't have the answer. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how much you come to church. If God has blessed you with children and grandchildren, you will damn well raise them right. You got to answer God. Oh, Lord. You got to answer God. Lord, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Yes, sir. See, we, we could be the outsource in our kids. To other people and other things. Uh -huh. You know how, like, say, best if I, if I design some shoes and I didn't have time to sell these shoes, and you know, then I'm gonna find somebody else that can make them and can sell them and can get them out there because I don't have the time. Right, and right. That's what we do in our children. That's right. We are sourcing our kids to school. And last time I checked, they took prayer out of school, right? Yeah, they did. But we outsourcing our kids to the school. The school has an anti-Christian worldview. Why would you want to outsource your child to the school? Why could they there eight hours a day and they ain't with you? Uh -huh. mm. That was okay. Right. And then church. Okay? You bring in the church on Sunday, we think pastor and I'm supposed to grieve them down with oil and, uh, and pray for them and, and they're going to go and be good. Right. But man, they go back home six days a week. Yes, sir. And they see everything that you do yes, God. ungodly. Jesus! Bring them back next time to pass the swim again. That's right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't Preach know. God. And in the television. Come on. <laughs> I remember I had a friend of mine used to punish other boy. I put him in front of the TV. I could be in the room in front of the TV. Little boy do all the commercials. <laughs> yes, little boy song. Camera two commercials. Yes, the song. Like do, do the boy do anything else. All he do is TV. So answer this question for me. How are children gonna think something's wrong when all they see is what they see? Right. If they're watching gun violence, sex, come on. drugs, come on. all this stuff, ungodly stuff on right. TV, that's right. and that's all they see, how are they gonna think that's wrong? That's right. God. How they go when that's all they see that's right. is what they see. That's right. We expect them to think that, you know, it's right. I don't know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we have become a generation of people that don't care. And we don't care. We don't, we don't, we don't know. Right. We don't care. Yeah. Guess what? <laughs> it's just like I told them when I when I used to smoke weed. I'd be in the room, one room, dog. Somebody come in and turn that light on. I say, Greg, turn that light off. You're going to blow my hat. Turn that light off. <laughs> you know? Yes, sir. If I'm the only one that ever smoked weed, I'm just telling you what I did. Okay? <laughs> but I tell them, turn that light off. But guess what? They still didn't stop the light. The light came on. Okay? The light came on. Y'all get it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That they stopped the light from coming on. That's right. Because guess what? I saw what I saw when the light was on. Uh -huh. No matter if the light went back on, I was only responsible for the light being on. That's right. So parents, you are responsible for what God has given you to do what you're supposed to do. And it tells us that children have to be disciplined. Proverbs 13 and 24. 